and welcome to the EdTech Chat and Chew podcast, the podcast where four passionate teachers from different parts of the country get together on their lunch breaks to share resources, tips, and ideas to help you empower your students. Each week, we'll do our best to inform and inspire you with the amazing things that are happening in our schools. We're very happy that you've joined us today. And now, here's your host, Diane Smokorowski. Welcome. This is EdTech Chat and Chew, episode number 11, and we are excited to be with you today. We're in a spring break in Kansas, woot woot, but it is uh, good things happening in other states as well. I'm Diane Smokorowski from Kansas, always with Hi. Andrea. Hi, guys. Oh, hello, hello. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Nice mustache, Joe. They like your mustache. And we have Mike from Pennsylvania. Hey, hello there. And Aaron with Joe in Texas. Hello. <laughs> Joe is our honorary um, Ed Tech Chat and Two special guest star every now and then, but he's brought a little Irish in with him today because they St. Patty's Day. So, um, does everybody have their green on? Are we pinching you from across? Uh, I have my Podstock shirt on, the original. Yes. yes. I have my, my Scranton Running Company. Very nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and today we're going to be just doing a roundtable of some of the great things that are happening in our schools. An hour, an hour later, and I'm going to go back to just finally back. You know? <laughs> you know what good things are happening around the country. So I'm going to start with Jeremy. Exactly. What's happening down in El Paso? Uh, boo. Sorry, in El Paso. <laughs> but we're still getting ready for our EPISD um, Student Digital Film Festival, so that's really exciting. We have a lot of students that are working on films, three-minute films. Um, something else I wanted to share was that we have a librarian that just did a Skype with Tom Engelberger, the author of Origami Yoda, and so I was chatting nice. with her a little bit about that, and he offers free Skype, so I want to add that um, to our show notes. It doesn't I, it doesn't charge apparently. So I was checking out his website and uh, the librarian had told me that he just happened to tweet something out about his, mm -hmm. uh, his free Skypes for Florida one month and it was one day that he was doing it and no one responded. Oh. So she got a free Skype here in Texas. So um, something just to kind of keep, keep an eye out for. And he made his Skype very interactive. The students um, built origami Yodas with him and he talked to them a lot about writing and it was, it was awesome. It was really, really cool to be a part of. So. Wow. Wow, yeah. that is incredible. I'm, I'm on that list. <laughs> yeah, my, my son is a total fan of those books. They're so fun. They are so much fun. It's perfect. So yes, very cool. Anything else happened in El Paso? Uh, okay, something else that's new. Um, we're starting BYOD, like just kind of experimenting with it at two of our campuses. And so just recently they, um, they brought some Apple educators in to train us on iTunes U and building our own courses. So I'm not sure what the next steps are. I've kind of learned a little bit and we'll, we'll, see, we'll see where that goes, but it's exciting anyway and new. <laughs> okay, I think Joe, who showed up in the back there with a cupcake, needs to be sharing with Karen. I'm just no <laughs> kidding. <laughs> He just told me he was eating healthy, and there he is eating a cupcake. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Mike, what's happening in Pennsylvania these days? Well, we had an incredible day on Friday. Friday is one of my favorite days of the year. It was Pi Day, and being a math guy, that's as good as it gets for us elementary math teachers. So I actually worked with three different classes in two different schools, uh, and we set up an uh, interactive spreadsheet on uh, Google Drive that I sent out to, on Twitter and Facebook, we got uh, maybe a dozen, maybe 14 different schools and classes that, were, uh, that joined us, all measuring different kinds of circular objects. Most of them were measuring the baked kind of pies. And everyone was entering their data into that spreadsheet uh, with the hope that we would be able to find the mean and median of all of those numbers and see how close the pie we could get. And we came extremely close, and it led to a nice discussion afterwards about when to use median, when to use mean, so some different statistical measures, and uh, and I got to eat pie with three different classes, so that was that was a lot of fun. Uh, and then this morning, uh, Bucky the Leprechaun actually made an appearance uh, in a in a Google Hangout with a couple different kindergarten classes for St. Patrick's Day. So that was uh, that was always fun to show kindergarten kids the beauty of technology and how it can bring 
uh, mythical figures into their classrooms. So. But that's what happened. That leprechaun messed up Google Hangouts. Yeah, I, I see since then Google <laughs> Hangouts been having a lot of problems today. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're Zooming today, which we, we mentioned last time on the last podcast, and this works really, really well. It's, it works very much similar to um, the Google Hangouts, and we can have 15 people in on this one, so it's very cool. So I'm hoping that maybe we'll get to see uh, Bucky here in just a little bit. Yeah, he, he said that he might stop by toward the end of the, of the podcast, so maybe <laughs> I can go drag him out and get him in a little bit. Fantastic. <laughs> Andrew, what's happening where you live, babe? Well, let's see. I've been working with second graders on how to create Google Docs and how to share them with their teachers. Pretty excited. They thought it was like magic. Oh my gosh, I created a document. Um, I'm working with some fourth graders this afternoon over math capers. They're, um, one of the projects that they're doing is creating their own math problems and interviewing people. So we're going to use ThingLink, I think, and thanks goodness to my EdTech Chat and Chew group that is helping me out. Um, they I have some ideas that, that they'll create their own game board and then thing link the different um, picture or the different thing links to actually be um, math conversations. And then I've been talking with my special ed peeps that I still have in my back pocket because now I can't leave them out or anything. And we have some great technology ideas we've done in the past. But we don't really have a place to host them. So I believe that we're about to start some collaborative um, maybe Pinterest board or Symbolu page that's going to have just geared towards special education um, technology projects that you can do and modify for your kids. So I'll have like the lesson plan, what materials you'll need, and maybe even examples. That's something else I'm about to work on too. Oh, wow. I like the idea yeah. of your Pinterest page. That would be something that you could easily share with the whole world. Exactly, exactly. So we're trying to figure out the best way to, to keep it all together so we can have lots of collaborators on it. So um, that's what I'm about to start next. So we'll see how it goes. Fantastic. Well, so some, someone's going to have to teach me how to use Pinterest, you know, eventually. <laughs> I know I'm a guy, but, but there seems like there's so much good stuff out there. I may just have to dabble well, you. You girls are going to have to teach me sometime how to, how to create a Pinterest page. There is Educlipper also, which is another website that I might um, – which I love and I love Adam Bello. He is fantastic. So I might dabble instead of Pinterest board since it's more educational. I might dabble into Educlipper for the special education. Um, so is that a little more manly? Because I hear that Pinterest is like 97% women. Well, you not, know. Not that I'm, you know, I'm pretty used to that being in <laughs> elementary school. <laughs> we can give you a tutorial. No worries. All right. All right. And uh, the one benefit about Pinterest is just so much easier to share when you have more teachers would be in familiar with that tool. So whatever you choose well, is going to be awesome. But one of the things that you do have to be aware of on Pinterest is that copyright rule. And that's where a lot of us are struggling right now because some people just pin and don't ever go back because if you pin it incorrectly, then you might not be able to locate your source. And so we're actually looking at why we should not use Pinterest. I love Pinterest and I actually have on my blog, I have, please feel free to pin or repin my ideas, but it just it just goes into the copyright um, thing, which you always have to be careful of anyway. That's that's definitely true to consider, especially if these would be your ideas that you and your friends have created. That makes sense, right? So, so, so we're kind of playing around with the ideas. So, so we've already got projects that we've done together as they've done together as live classrooms. So, and I'm trying to convince them too that they need to submit a proposal to our our um, summer institute that we have here at school. And they're like, what? And I'm like, yes, you need to share these things that you're doing with special ed so other people can see that these kids with special ed can do it. Everybody can do it. Yeah, so, yeah no most definitely, most definitely. Anyway. Well, so Diane, what are you up to? Well, we just, what reminded me of this is that Karen mentioned here with the Origami Yoda author, we just did a Skype call with the author Ridley Pearson last week. Who, oh, wow. Did all the Kingdom Keepers. Yes, it's a Disney thing. So, yeah, made me happy. Um, but he also did the Peter and the Star Catchers. Skype in the Classroom did several authors who would Skype in for a day for the World Read Aloud Day, and he was one of them. Talk about a dynamic presenter. He was so animated and excited and talked about his exclusive Disney access that he has even at night. To go behind the scenes oh, for the research. Wow. Yes. That's awesome. So so Mike, my Disney buddy, yeah, you would have been probably as as excited in your seat as I was. <laughs> yeah. Well well my daughter's actually reading that series for the second time now, and one of my other teachers just borrowed book three off of us. So <laughs> and a new one's coming out next month. So yeah. be on the lookout. Um, 
but yeah, that was fantastic. But a couple other things that we have that I'm working on in the district right now is that there are five national parks that'll Skype to schools. One of them is Yellowstone. And if you just Google Skype a ranger Yellowstone, it pops up, but I'll put it, the direct link into the show notes. But it's just a matter of filling out a little form in an email, and then they will set up a scheduled time to work with you. We've done two of these, one with first grade and one with fourth grade, and truly has been just truly a dynamic um, experience for these students to get to talk about coyotes or coyotes, depending on what part of the region the US, U.S. you're from, bison and antlers and that come off of elk. I mean, it's just really interesting. But also, you have Denali National Park in Alaska will Skype, the, um, the Badlands in South Dakota, Grand Canyon and the Biscayne National Park, which is in the coastal regions of Florida that covers the coral reef and so forth. So if you study animals, habitats, classification, ecology of any sort, even on the idea of protecting our wildlife, every one of these would be a dynamic place for you to cover. So you would have the desert, you would have um, the tundra, you would have, you know, ocean, ocean, oceanic, that's what I'm looking for. Um, <laughs> you'd be able to cover all of those and it's completely free. That and there is a snake conservatory in Colorado who is now setting up virtual field trips to do for free with kids all around the world with Google Hangouts. So I will share that information as well. Uh, Cameron Young is the guy who sets that up and he takes students out with his phone out into looking for real snakes and they flip over rocks and look for bugs and then what makes this a great habitat. He'll be setting several of these up in April because it's finally wow. warm enough in Colorado to start looking for snakes. So I will share that as well. And the that best part, cool. my friends, is it's zero dollars. Who likes that? <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> So those are, those are things that we've been working on around here lately. Anytime that we can create a real world connection to what we do, I think we're doing the right thing for kids. So with yeah. any luck, we'll be able to add more to our list of great places to Skype before the year is over. Yeah, actually I have, I have one, I have a Skype call set up on Friday. Our gifted students have been working on a project based learning lesson that's actually a full year project where they're um, looking at World War II landing craft from D-Day and redesigning them and building models. And uh, they actually have a Skype call coming up with the Naval Museum in Washington, D.C. Uh, wow. this Friday. I just got the call this morning to set it up. And uh, they're going to be discussing landing craft with some of the experts there at that, uh, that museum. Oh, and you know that the World War II Museum in New Orleans will do mystery Skype calls? So that I didn't, but that's awesome. Yeah, so all you have to do is contact them. I'll put that in the show notes as well. Great. They'll stand in front of an artifact and they say, guess where I am, based on the, the <laughs> artifacts near me. And it's kind of an incredible way to start a conversation around the Holocaust or World War II moves, you know, heroes, whatever it is that you want to cover. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> okay, my friends, anything else on the list? No. Okay, so we will be having some good news for all of our participants or those who listen to our podcast next week. We have a new global project that we are launching for Poetry Month in April. So uh, just a little hint, poetry in your pockets coming very, very soon. And I'm just grab these opportunities to get out of the spring fever mode, be outside, be inspired with some descriptive writing, and then we'll maybe having opportunities for some uh, video conferencing going on. So. That's all I'm going to share for today, but next week we'll have more information. So I want to thank awesome. everybody for joining us, and we shall see you next time on Ed Wait, wait, oh, Diane, not wait, yet. Wait, we have a special guest. Uh, oh, well, we do, but I was going to ask you what you had for lunch. What did I have oh, for lunch today? Well, while we do, while we do the lunch roundtable, let me go see if Bucky's available. Let me okay, okay. Lunch, right? <laughs> I almost stopped too soon. Let's start with Karen. What did you have for lunch today, Karen? Pizza. <laughs> But was it, it delicious? It, it was so delicious. It was, we, we I, I'm, you know, I'm not advertising here, but Peter Piper pizza, you know, it's just great. <laughs> Pepperonis. <laughs> Did you have the cupcakes go with it? Not yet. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at it. We're, we're celebrating St. Patty's Day and then, uh, our librarian's birthday, too. So. <laughs> oh, look, Bucky's here, friends. Oh, ladies and lassies. 
<laughs> it's the lunch discussion. Oh, Bucky, happy St. Patrick's Day. Yes, happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and what did Bucky um, get to do today? Oh, I, I talked with the little laddies and lassies in the kindergarten. <laughs> I love it. It's oh, awesome. <laughs> with the headset, I love it. I love it. <laughs> But Bucky, I mean, yes. how did you get to come to Pennsylvania today? Oh, I'm not. I'm in Ireland. In Ireland. I just used the video conference. <laughs> and it's, you know, what, Bucky, that is the best costume I have ever seen. <laughs> 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 and he's and he's all set up with the headset. That's fantastic. And what did Bucky have for lunch today? Lucky uh, turns. Bucky, Bucky had leftovers from uh, from Mike's wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I pull a Palmita. <laughs> oh, that just makes me happy, happy, happy. Okay. And Mike has a pretty awesome wife. I just have to say. <laughs> I agree. I agree. And Karen, Karen, Andrea, what did you have for lunch today? Well, because I forgot my corned beef and hash and cabbage at home, I had um, I had Subway. <laughs> but William did make a nice Irish meal last night, so it was it was very yummy last night. Wonderful. <laughs> well, I met some teachers that I had gone through a master's program with. We meet once a year, and so today we had. Um, lunch at a pretty um, phenomenal place in here in town called Taste and See. And I had, um, for, I had fish tacos with, and I had a dessert we all shared. There was a Nutella mousse, more with toasted uh, marshmallows mm. on type, top. So yeah, just a couple of bites. Okay, maybe four bites of that one. <laughs> 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 but yeah, oh, it uh, today. Nice. Okay, friends, we shall see you next time. I'll chat to you. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>